We've got a, a very interesting panel today. John Gloucester, the former India team physiotherapist, uh, joins us. Uh, Arun Pandey, who is the producer of the MS Dhoni biopic, that wonderful film. Kiran More, former BCCI chair of selectors, former India wicketkeeper, somebody who I grew up watching. Uh, and Sri Sant, the former India fast bowler, joins us as well. Let me come to you, Mr. Gloucester. We know all about his cricket statistics and, and all of that and what a great finisher he was. Tell us a little bit about MS, the human being, somebody who you saw up close and personal. Yeah, thanks, Vishnal. And uh, just first of all, just the sad news about Chetan Chauhan today. I only just heard that, so I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, I think you said exactly that. It's the human being element. And, and MS, above all, was a good human being. And for me, that's all that really matters. And uh, he was a wonderful ambassador for cricket. He was a wonderful ambassador for, for India. Um, but he's also a wonderful ambassador for the way the game is being played in the, in the modern era. And, and I think from a, from a personal perspective, he embraced the mantra of fitness that we were all trying to push at that time early on in the, in the early 2000s when he came into the team. He ended up being the fastest cricketer that I've ever worked with, over 20 metres, um, which some find quite surprising, but uh, the fastest, instinctive, and we still use the words Captain Cool, but overall... For me, it was all about being a decent human being. Yeah. Um, Arun, you've, uh, you know, as producer of the MS Tony biopic, you've spoken to any number of people who've seen MS growing up. It, it was a struggle for him um, to, to get into competitive cricket, to succeed in competitive cricket, rise up the ranks from Jharkhand, first Bihar, then Jharkhand, then on to the national stage. Um, was he always at school or were there occasions in his life when he was tense and uneasy? Uh, first of all, uh, I also give my uh, condolence to uh, Chetan Chauhanji. I mean, he lost his life today. So my all uh, uh, condolences for his family. And uh, yeah, uh, you asked uh, about uh, his calmness and coolness. You know, he end of the day, he is also in, uh, human. But the most important thing about him is that he keep all kind of uh, puzzle and uh, issue inside him, within. He never express his introvert, his emotional person. He also live his life uh, through emotions, but he never express his, his feelings. He never express uh, what is going on inside. He, yeah, he used to be tense most of the time because, you know, handling team, handling issues, spacer, but he never expressed on his face or he never, uh, you know, uh, expressed to his uh, teammates or family member or friends or sure. anyone. Well, because as a leader, uh, you, you have to uh, absorb everything. You have to absorb yeah. everything so that uh, that should not affect to your sure. team teammates or uh, others. Right. So I just wanted to, uh, to go across to, to Kiran More. Um, Mr. More, you were a champion a wicketkeeper yourself. Um, and in as much as we talk this evening about Captain Cool and, and Dhoni the finisher and uh, Dhoni the batsman, I think a part of his game which we should never forget his or uh, is, is his wicketkeeping. Wicketkeeping needs a great deal of intelligence. It's not just instinct. Um, and and coordination and great eyesight. How was his wicket keeping all about his great intelligence and his understanding of what was happening? Yeah. <clears throat> so, to start off, Vishnu, that a very sad news. Uh, my senior colleague, Najetan John, passed away today. You know, my condolences to his family. But uh, of course, you know, wicket keeping is tough. You know, and when. Uh, when MS Dhoni came on scene, you know, like he played for India A and then uh, there was a question mark about his wicket keeping, you know, and uh, when he was picked for Indian team also that time also, uh, he didn't have a great time in wicket keeping. Uh, a lot of people criticized him, uh, a lot of people criticized us as well, but uh, it was a start for him and uh, as a batting wise, for me, he was one of the ruthless players I've seen, you know, uh, the, the, I think the hardest hitter of the ball. Uh, at wheel, he could hit success, you know, and uh, <clears throat> he was smart, you know, as well, you know, how to bat, how to plan his inning. So he had all the package, but we keep keeping, there was a question mark. But I always believe that, you know, once you get opportunity, you 
as a cricketer you know you have to grow you just can't be sitting there okay this is i am uh, i am uh, this is the limit i have no i think ms dhoni showed that you know he improved he worked very hard on his wicket keeping and he became number one wicket keeper in the world and he is the great wicket keeper who create things and as a wicket keeper mm -hmm. as a selector i always believe that you look at a wicket keeper who create things you know if you are 150 for no loss a wicket keeper goes and take a brilliant diving catch or brilliant stumping brilliant run out turn around the match he's the match winner for you you know so that's what ms dhoni did that you know and he was very smart sharp he uh, his, his reading of the game was outstanding he was always i i thought while wicket keeping he was always two seconds ahead what is going to happen you know that in situation that's yeah. why he was always in good position to take stumping catches run out brilliant you know so yeah. for me that package was superb he really worked on his wicket keeping yeah. batting he was ready but for yeah. me uh working on wicket keeping skills was very important for dhoni's success sure absolutely um john um the intelligence that he brought on to the game in terms of his batting as well he was an unconventional bats batsman and yet he succeeded uh, in most conditions uh, when his technique was not ideal for for example the swinging uh, ball in uh, in england or um, you know on occasions in australia or in new zealand but his ability to adapt uh, and his intrinsic uh, intelligence uh, made him uh, you know i mean ultimately made him the cricketer that he is um, could you just tell us a little or share a little bit about his intelligence as a cricketer and the ability of him to adapt his game to different conditions i think if uh, you put it into a nutshell really well there actually and i think the key was was he kept everything so simple he just kept everything so simple he didn't overcomplicate anything he didn't overthink anything and he just let what naturally came come to the fore because that's how he was i mean ms uh, was a wonderful athlete um he was a very smart trainer but he kept the procedures and the process is very simple so not to complicate anything so i think that was a fascinating thing about him it was interesting also to watch the way he changed his approach in terms of training particularly on the fitness side as he got a bit older he also got a lot smarter um as a lot of the uh, the really good cricketers do so he adapted he was he was he adapted very well um but the beautiful thing about him was he didn't overcomplicate any situation and that was in his not only his physical messaging but also in his in the way he spoke the way he delivered messages the way he addressed the team so so a lot of young players will have learned a lot from ms doni around how to conduct themselves in terms of the way they think and then the way the way they communicate with with others around them yeah uh, arun pande was he always a natural leader yeah i mean uh, i will share you uh, one uh, one incident uh, like uh, I, uh, we were sitting somewhere and we were said it's a, uh, we we said to uh, someone that oh this is common sense so he said you know there is no common sense you can't you can't evaluate every individual at same pace like john mentioned uh, that uh, you know he, may, he used to make things very simple he never used to make things complicated he never he always said that listen if you have five people you can't you can't treat five people same way you have to treat uh, every single person individually because individual people uh, every individual have their own character you have to treat them some some uh, so some, with someone you have to be nice you have to be uh, you know uh, you have to be very simple you have to be uh, hard depend on characters you know so that leadership uh, quality yeah definitely whenever even even while sitting together and you know the way he used to conduct right he, i mean i i totally agree with john that he 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 used to make things so simple that even a, a, a kid can understand sure i just want to go across to to sri sant who joins us now uh, sri good to have you uh, with us now you've uh, he's dhoni is somebody who's um, who's pushed you to perform at your best when you were in team india your performance in south africa um, in, in that uh, t20 world cup as well he's also been somebody who was quite strict and stern with you for example in fielding he told you you know uh, uh, sri you better focus so tell us a little bit about how 
he dealt with you as a captain was he very strict was he very firm or was he very encouraging very good evening to one and all. Um, so thank you very much for having me. Um, Dhoni Bhai was, uh, you know, uh, you know, as people say, I, most the, I think the best street smart cricketer and uh, who took decisions random. And uh, he had the complete faith in himself and the belief system which he have even now. Uh, he, he's full of surprises, a man full of surprises. So he knew exactly. I think the biggest quality of uh, Dhoni Bhai is man management. He knew exactly what to tell whom to tell and where to say and how to say. So the way you, uh, the one thing I have learned from him is that. And uh, yes, uh, um, you know, he was strict when it's supposed to be strict and when he was very fun loving and very uh, caring also when it mattered. Uh, so I've, I think I'm, I'm just been uh, blessed and honored to have played a uh, couple of World Cups under him and uh, win it. And uh, especially the test matches also. I remember the last test uh, uh, even when we were not uh, doing that well in England, he still had the faith, uh, not just in me, but the entire team of at least, you know, getting a victory out of uh, somewhere. Uh, so, he never gave up even till the last goal. So, uh, I think that's one great attitude. One greatest memory, uh, when I look back about Dhoni Bhai, is uh, uh, surely, you know, whatever he said, like Mohammed Ali, that's the way I compare to him. Because whenever he says something, he does it. Uh, the biggest example was the 2005 uh, Pakistan India series in in Pakistan, which we won four one, where uh, his long hair and his style, and even the prime minister started praising him. Not just because of just the hair, the performance. He used to tell, uh, you know, we used to have this little chat where I used to charge Muhammad Asif Kumar, and tomorrow you have to hit this guy. So he used to literally say uh, and hit him uh, for sixes, and that was straight over the side screen, and he used to prove it. So. Uh, from then on, it is more like a Muhammad Ali who says it and then do it. So uh, I think he was. He had this gift. He still has the gift, and um, you know, to hit the best of the best bowlers and maybe destroy their career completely, even one just bowling uh, facing one over. Um, uh, Mr. Modi, uh, one of the toughest things which MS Dhoni would have had to have done is in working with the available talent. There is over the last several years incredible talent in Indian cricket, and it would have meant picking some and not picking some. Um, and identifying talent, uh, how how involved or how important was that uh, in his captaincy? Working with talent, identifying talent, and making the tough choices. I think he always believed in process, you know, and that process he I think got it. He learned from uh, Greg Chappell, Raul Dravid, and uh, went on to do it himself, you know, and uh, and that's what it is, you know, like he kept it very simple. So uh, whenever the opportunity was given to anyone. I think he actually always given that opportunity to all the players at least seven to eight matches or ten matches. You know, you can't judge a player within a three games or four games. So when the player gets picked, he's already done very well in domestic cricket. So when he comes to international cricket, it's a different ball game. So sometimes a lot of players they come under pressure. Uh, there are a lot of temperamental issues. But once he get going, I think then the player is ready for you. So that's what Dhoni did. You know, he always believed in all the players. He had a trust in players. So when you have a trust in players, and especially the ballers, see what he did with the Indian team. What has happened in, with the Indian team was best thing what happened with the Indian team is that MS Dhoni controlled all the ballers. You know, he wanted this baller should bowl this line to this batsman. So he was very smart. So even the baller got advantage of it. You know, because I always believe that while I kept wickets uh, for India, I always believe it's a, it's a partnership mm. between the spinners with the fast bowlers, wicket keeper. Baller's partnership, and here he was a captain, so he knew each baller. He treated Jadeja very well. Uh, now Kuldeep Yadav, Chahal, he made them top baller. Ashwin, so he made them top baller. Harbhajan Singh, so he knew each and every player. He knew the uh, game plan, so he implemented those on the field. So that was a big advantage for Indian ballers. And even last World Cup, what we saw, MS was controlling a lot of things on the field. And uh, thanks to Virat, I and mean, Virat was such a mat mature captain, he allowed that to MS to do that because standing behind as a wicketkeeper, you know the game very well. What is how the way game is going, the ball is moving, how the batter is batsman, how they are approaching, how the spinner is bowling, what line is bowling. So I think uh, they, that's what the MS did, it, you know, sure. and he did it with brilliant, with brilliant idea, brilliant vision. It's not just you think he's smart, everything. But he used to think a lot about the game. Yeah. So he knew each and everything. He used to read the player. So the best part of MS Dhoni was reading a player, reading a situation of the game. That's why he was a master of 
uh, wicket keeping, master of captainship, and uh, the best students of you know best student of game I have seen. You know, and uh, one day I must tell this story to you guys that one day we were sitting in the selection committee meeting with, with Rahul Dravid, uh, other five selectors. Uh, we were discussing just uh, uh, there were light conversation going on, and uh, Greg Chappell comes and says that this guy is going to be a future captain. So I asked Greg, you know, after the meeting, I said, why did you say this? I said, Kiran, the, the conversation of what I had with this guy in the last six to seven months, it is unbelievable. He reads the game. I think he's one of the best readers of the game in the whole team. So that was Greg Chapel, you know, and he made that statement openly in that forum, you know. So I think uh, Dhoni had that talent, you know. So I think uh, he proved the world. And we don't have to say much about Dhoni. I think, uh, thanks, Mahi. What you've done to Indian cricket, and, and, and you are going to keep on doing for your know, IPL also. So I think thank you very much. You know that's a fascinating story, uh, Kiran Mori. I had not heard of that before. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that story with us, and I'd like to thank uh, the rest of our panelists also this evening for joining us. Um, what a career MS Dhoni has had. Uh, what a remarkable, remarkable performer for Indian cricket.